Creatine is a molecule that can be naturally produced. However, it's widely recognized through its synthetic form as a sports supplement. In fact, it is one of the most well-researched sports supplements with over a thousand human studies conducted. The benefits associated with creatine supplementations have been well-researched with a consensus in findings such as increased strength, increased muscle mass, improved performance, and fatigue resistance. Creatine can be acquired in two ways. The first way is through the synthesis of creatine in our kidneys and liver from amino acids glycine, arginine, and methionine. And the second way is through our diet, mostly through the consumption of animal products. However, it doesn't provide nearly as much creatine compared to creatine supplements. While there are many forms of creatine supplements, the most reliable and well-researched form is creatine monohydrate. Other forms such as creatine HCL and creatine ethyl ester are not as well-researched and are unnecessarily more expensive. So now that we know how we get creatine, where does it go in our body? Well, about 95% of creatine in our body will be stored in the skeletal muscles. Skeletal muscles are muscles used when performing physical activities or voluntary movement. Creatine itself doesn't provide much function to our skeletal muscles. However, when it's converted to phosphocreatine by creatine kinase, an enzyme that can convert creatine to phosphocreatine and vice versa, it serves as a small energy reservoir in the form of adenosine triphosphate, otherwise known as ATP, for our skeletal muscles during high intensity exercise. Now before further explaining the mechanism of phosphocreatine, we need to talk about ATP first. ATP is made in our mitochondria and is a molecule that provides energy to our cells. When ATP is broken down into adenosine diphosphate, otherwise known as ADP, the energy released is used by our cells. When we perform high intensity exercises such as a squat, bench press, and sprint. The contracting muscles involved in those exercises require immediate energy in the form of ATP. Unfortunately, the ATP from my mitochondria isn't able to diffuse rapidly enough and efficiently enough to the contracting muscle cells. This is when the phosphocreatine shuttle system comes into play. What happens is, the ATP produced in a mitochondria encounters mitochondrial creatine kinase. This is the same enzyme that converted creatine to phosphocreatine. The mitochondrial creatine kinase transfers the high energy phosphate from the ATP to convert creatine to phosphocreatine, producing ADP in the process. The reason why the high energy phosphate from ATP is transferred over to phosphocreatine is because phosphocreatine can more easily diffuse across the mitochondrial membrane into the cytoplasm. During exercise, there's a lot of ADP in our cells. So once phosphocreatine is in the cytoplasm, it will encounter a creatine kinase that will convert phosphocreatine back to creatine and also transfer that high energy phosphate to ADP to create ATP. The ATP will then be used by the contracting muscle cells while the creatine will then return to the mitochondria and this process is then repeated. So how does creatine supplementation impact this process? Through ingesting creatine, we increase the total amount of creatine in our cells. As a result, there will be more creatine in our cells that will be converted into phosphocreatine. The increased resynthesis of phosphocreatine is useful for providing our contracting muscles with an extra boost of energy during high intensity exercises, thus facilitating the aforementioned benefits. Overall, creatine supplementation is important for providing extra phosphocreatine to assist in the phosphocreatine shuttle system. While there is strong support that creatine is safe and poses minimal risks to one's health, there are numerous health concerns regarding creatine supplementation, such as dehydration, 
digestive problems, muscle cramps, and kidney damage. It is important to stress that the effects of creatine is variable across individuals, and that research on its safety and efficacy is quite limited. In regards to the greatest health concern of kidney damage, a 2019 systematic review and meta-analysis analyzing the effects of creatine supplementation on renal function found that supplementation did not induce kidney damage. However, individuals with chronic kidney disease should avoid using creatine supplementation. Now that you hopefully understand how creatine works, it's important to follow the recommended dosages. And if you're still worried about potential risks, I encourage you to conduct your own research to make an informed decision.